Hello. Hello. That you just took like a pause. I did. I had to get myself we, together. I think we caught that for a minute. Well, you hello. just did like a Welcome. Hi everyone. Hi everyone. Welcome to Needles at the Ready. I'm Kevin. And I'm Ray. This is our YouTube channel where we talk about knitting, yeah. maybe some crochet, some dyeing, the little fiber arts, and this All of those is fun things. Episode fifty three. It is. What's your phone doing? It's updating. Today is Saturday, January 22nd, 2020. It is my father's birthday today. Well, happy birthday. Happy birthday, Dad. I just, I learned that he watches the podcast with my mom. Yes, he's Very started. cute. So um, I wish you a very happy birthday. And although you said that I might have been switched at birth. Possibly. Um, no, no. There's no if way. I, no, there's no <laughs> way. But if, if I was, I would still choose you as my father. Oh my gosh, Aww. how cute tier um so we are coming to you guys from stratford connecticut where we live with our dog tarquin yep who is currently sleeping in the bedroom hopefully for this entire recording that would be nice and we have changed our placement of the ipad that we record on i went back and watched an older episode well just a bit of it i needed to find something yeah and i noticed that <laughs> the view got really close the past um, several months. I know. So we moved it back. So I like this way better. So I hope you I guys do too. do too. And and that's that. That's that. So thank you for joining us. Yes. You have a lovely two weeks. We'll see you next time. <laughs> so welcome um, back to all our returning viewers. And if you're a new viewer, welcome. Yeah, I hope thank you, you so much. We've had quite a few subscribers. Yeah. It's so really exciting. Subscribe, like, comment. Yeah. Dislike, whatever you want to do. Whatever you want. It's your day. So let's... Jump into our two weeks. Okay. So in the, if you're new, the way that we usually do this is... Oh, you're going to do it like that. No, we're very not organized no. at all. This is a poop show, so you're just... It is what it is. I was just kidding. All right. So that's it. So yeah. Right. What, what have we so done? let's get into the last two weeks. Um, actually, let's get into what we're wearing first. Sure. So I'll go first. These are oldies but goodies. These are oldies but goodies. This one I'm wearing because a viewer commented on the episode that I finished it in. And I was like, oh, where the hell is that shawl? Mm -hmm. And we have, um, in our entryway, we have like a little bench. And below that, we have a bin where we keep all of our shawls. Right. So I go looking through there, can't find it. And I know that we had another bin up here that... In the had, spa-oom? In the spa -oom closet that yep. had um, some finished objects in it. So I went through there and I found this. This... And it's really nice. It's really nice. It really is. I don't know why is. I don't wear it. I don't know. And it's such a um, simple... So this is my Boneyard yeah. by Stephen West. Right. And from what I know, because, you know, I don't take notes or have a Ravelry page, prior to Although, 2022... wait till you... Prior hear. to 2022. Correct. This is knit out of Cascade Aegean wool. Is it Cascade? No, it's not a Cascade. No, mine was Aegean wool. This is, though, the gray. Okay, great. My gray is a GM wool from Cascade. Yep. The blue and the orange are from Brooklyn Tweed. It's Arbor. This is, the blue is, I believe, Shishiko. Nice. And then the orange is Butte. Mm -hmm. um, so it's a triangular shawl. It's you so good. You start here. Yeah. And it has some garter bumps throughout. And it's meant, I mean, I remember knitting it. It was knit in one color. I decided to use some color blocking and striping. Yeah. So I'm actually really pleased with it. Me I too. don't know why I don't wear it. It's really light. Well, because it was in that bin. That's why you don't wear it. Now that you've pulled it out of the bin, you've worn it a bunch. Right. Oh, yeah. no. What? A break. Oh, no. That's right. You know what's really good about Brooklyn Tweed is you can that spit felt it I together. can spit felt this. So we're just going to pull these tight. So that actually brings in another um, thingamajigger is that I know that we've, this is probably like the second item or third item that we've like found holes in. This one looks like it just got caught. The other ones may have been like issues with moths. Yeah, which is so, so weird because you don't see them. Yeah, so I just purchased a bunch of cedar blocks that we, and satchels and things like that. So I just actually put two satchels down in where we keep our shawls yeah um so yeah so this is it's a dk weight shawl it does take a bit of time because you are um there's a lot of stock net in this it's also <laughs> yeah it's pretty much all stock net except for this section and your um 
garter ridges. Yeah. So it does take quite a while to knit. So that I, I just remember that about it. Um, so I'm not going to wear this because I don't want that to continue to fall. So yes, again, Stephen West, Boneyard Shawl. Really, really nice. I'm wearing, you've all seen this before. This is my Slip Stravaganza by Stephen West as well. Um, this is knit out of all um, Trilogy Yarns by Nancy. It's in her, every, it's the MCN base, Merino Cashmere Nylon fingering weight. It is lovely. Um, I don't really remember the colors. Let's see. So this is whiskey. Yep. I know that. The brown is teddy bear. Um, I think this color is little nugget. Is little nugget. Did I miss any? Yeah. Um, this one. Oh, that one is. No. Is is that how many colors is the twelve? I think it's four. I don't know. Maybe it's only three. I have yellow, blue, green. Yellow, blue, green in mine. Maybe. But this was uh, this was wonderful. I this is absolutely hands down my favorite shawl I've ever knit, and it's my most worn shawl. It is your yeah yeah sure. I wear it all the time in so many different ways. Usually I like to kind of like wrap it like a kind of like a poncho almost yeah in a way like over my shoulders. What's but... my most worn one? You I don't wear... know. I I go back and forth. Like I wear you that. Do. I've been wearing my Paris to for... yeah quite a bit i have enjoyed that i've been wearing that one a lot now yes i've been wearing a lot of my cowls actually i wore my i've been wearing my volcano trail you have and i wore it the nice other and day deep, so taking the dog and for a walk it's I could thicker cover too my face. like yes yeah, it's, it's, it's a it's dk yeah it's fingering nice. held double yeah um and then before we jump into our two weeks oh. let's show this so i decided to buy us a little gift we've been saying for a while that we wanted one of these yeah so i bought us i don't agree with the where i place them but i bought us some needles at the ready coffee mugs oh you can place them somewhere i don't know i wish oh, i had looked would be good. Yeah. it would have been better on the mm -hmm. side so i would like to buy another one for us with it but when you the say right. cheers cheers so it's Alansha. i bought these from right? zazzle and they were actually quite expensive so if anybody has recommendations where you can get custom it's a good made, quality though yeah if you have a recommendation or know someplace where you could get a good custom made mug from mm -hmm. um please drop it in the comments or reach out to us on instagram because mm -hmm. i would like to um buy a different one yeah and it'd be cool to have these for like giveaways if we could order extras and have like mugs for giveaways oh yeah i would love to do that totally okay so now let's really talk about our two weeks okay so there hasn't been much right we did so two weeks ago the day after the podcast your mom came over hung out for a bit we knit yep. and i think that's it i don't think we made lunch or anything like that we didn't like eat which we do sometimes, you know. I don't think we, we did that day. No. no, I don't think we did either. I think we just knit. Yeah, we just hung out. I don't and even knit. know if we knit. It was a little bit later in the in the morning, maybe that she came over. No, we definitely knit. No, it was knit. early in the. It was earlier in the day. Oh. Yeah, I don't remember. We just hung know. out. We hung out. Yeah, that was nice. And then we worked that next week, and then last weekend we went to my brother's and sister in law's house. So we. Typically during the holidays, on Christmas morning, we go to my brother's house for breakfast. Mm -hmm. Then we come home. And, cook, and give the kids the gifts right. and all that. Our niece and nephew their yeah. gifts. Hang out with her family. Um, and obviously we didn't do that this year because right. I had COVID. Right. Um, somebody else had COVID, so it was canceled for breakfast. So this was the first time we were able to get together with them mm -hmm. after the holidays. So we went and it was fun. We just had pizza, had some drinks. Gave the kids their presents. Um, they were super happy with them. They, they loved their so hats. They were so happy. They, they both on. wore the hats the whole time. Yeah. It was really cute. So if you're new, we had knit them the muscle, muscle bra, muscle bra hat um, from Isolde Teague. We had both used, or I had knit my nephews out of Felici Beyond the Wall and Navy um, Knit Pick Stroll. Right. You would knit our nieces out of Flamingo from Savvy Skeins. Good job. And it was a light blue stroll from Knit Picks. Right. Um, so, yeah. So, they Arctic loved them. Something. Arctic Blast. Arctic. And then that's been about it. It's literally it. That's all we've really done. Yeah. We did a lot of TV watching. I feel we like. We did. We've watched TV. Mm -hmm. um, whether it's, it's been... TV shows or basketball for me. Right. Um, yeah, it was one of those like fortnights where we just kind of wanted to cuddle up on the couch and it. It's been a little chilly. Yeah, and it's been that 
after the after the rush of the holiday season going i mean even if you think it starts kind of like for us here in the u.s halloween like that october 31st to december 31st january 1st is just this mad rush to get stuff done and yeah get even the second week of january to like play catch up kind of like hibernation mode where we're just hanging out at home and enjoying Mm -hmm. the slowness of the winter which is so nice except i'm not enjoying the cold i'm not enjoying the below 20 degrees temperatures so but that's kind of been our two weeks yeah that's about it so how about you guys hope you guys have had a good two weeks yeah oh and this just happened yesterday what i was in the middle of my work day and i've been working from home for a month again and i decided my glasses were a little dusty oh yeah so i go in and to clean my glasses and as i'm cleaning them they literally just snapped in half so luckily i found my really old pair probably like there it's probably about 10 years old if i'm not mistaken and was able to make an appointment at a, a vision place here for yesterday evening early evening and i got contacts which i've been out of contacts for about six months so that's why i've been wearing my glasses and i ordered a new pair of glasses same kind of style but different colors it's going to be blue and gray tortoiseshell yeah I can't glasses wait. and the funny thing was is i had a dream last weekend it was so weird and i told ray that i you know just random dream that i was able to make an appointment at the eye doctor the same day and then yesterday i did you made not yeah so that's been our two weeks no i got the results of my oh yeah um my ancestry dna are you guys interested this is where the comment that my father thinks that i was um switched at birth but i think that this is really cool and it was very surprising so my um my grandmother my my father's parents my grandmother was uh 100% italian or she's from italy Her parents are from italy and my grandfather was french from france and so you would think that i would be at least 25% and 25%. Right. Right? No. So, here is my ethnicity breakdown. From England and Northwestern Europe, which does include France, it's 53%. They so that, didn't break it down, like, yeah. in there. It may, uh, um, it may over time. Yeah. Like, mine has adjusted That's what I'm excited to see so how things change. May. Ireland, 19% is my next highest. Oh, yeah, ye lad. So, I'm, I'm, uh, I'm... A lucky child. We lad. Yeah, so I think our next trip would be to go to Ireland. So maybe we can like scope out some houses and stuff. I can go back to my my roots. Um, ten percent Germanic Europe. I'm mostly Germanic Europe. Eight percent Scotland. So maybe that's why I, I can finally say Musselboro correctly. You know, like Edinburgh. Don't you, no, don't you, no. That's not. That's not that. Um, seven percent Southern Italy and two percent Northern Italy. So that does not add up to twenty five percent. Just saying. And then one percent Norway. So Arna and Carlos, move on over. We're coming to stay. <laughs> I don't think I have any Norway in me. I don't remember. Yeah, mine's like. So it's really neat because it so, breaks it down, and wait. then like you can click on it, and it'll tell you. Um, so how many? Wait. I, how many like ethnicities are there? What do you mean? Like listed. You have one, two, one, two three, three, four, five, six, seven. I just want to compare mine. Maybe they no. only give you the seven. No, I have a whole lot more. I'm not going to go over mine. I just want to see how many I have. But so Western have, Chechnya? Wait. Chechnya? Oh, I you have, have a lot. You're, one, two, you're three, spread four, all over the five, place. six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen in my list. Wow. No, I would, we're, we're, uh, but you know what's really cool is that it'll tell you like over time. So like in 1700, you can find me in Chech- Chechia? Chech- Chechnya. Chechnya. There's no N. Oh. Yeah. And then if you go to like 1850, you can see... Uh, you probably can't see that. But yeah. But where people had come over to the United States and they're settling up like by Michigan. Look at you. Yeah. They it's, came to Lake Michigan. It's really fun. If you guys haven't it's done really it... It's really fun. And if you're interested... Yeah. Definitely always check out Amazon on Black Friday. They right. always have these kits on sale for 50% off. Yep. And then by 1950, this is kind of where my ancestors were all hanging out. Cool beans. And then we're over here. Nice. Yeah. So that I thought has that was offic- fun. So that's officially been our two weeks. That was really exciting when I that got the results. That has been. Yeah. So let's get into some knitting. 
I feel like it's going to be a short episode. Same. Um, so I have to sh- show today. I have two finished objects, two whips, and I've been dying up. I've been getting my dying mojo. Yeah, back. you should and show a bunch. It's I have a bunch here. Oh, good. Um, and it's not that I lost it, but I was sick and I didn't have that energy. And then it was the holiday season. It just took like yeah. there just wasn't time on the weekends. Yeah. Um, and that's typically when I do the most of my dying is on the weekends if we have time. So um, I've been getting back into the dye studio, aka our kitchen, and <laughs> doing some stuff. So I'll show some of that at the end. So yeah, two FOs, two whips, and some dye jar. I have two FOs and three whips. Okay. And all of the information that we are about to show can be found on our Ravelry pages. What did you say? Yes. Ravelry. Yeah, I have to take pictures of them, though. That's what I need to do this weekend. Of anything that I've created Ravelry pages for, I yeah. need to take pictures. So you know what? I. It's hard to... It's hard... I think that was a lot of the delay last time or last year when we said we wanted to put, you know, stuff up for Ravelry. Because you want to take good pictures, but sometimes it's... Our schedules don't... Um, match up and it's hard to take a picture of yourself wearing a shawl yeah. without looking like you're taking a picture in the bathroom mirror or whatever um so i've just been posting i've just been taking pictures as i can and as i get better pictures we'll add them in but i'm not gonna have that hold me back and i'm a really bad picture taker it i part of it for my of myself and it was just from the way back when i had the lump on my face i just don't oh, yeah. i didn't like taking pictures so i'm not in the habit of doing that taking yeah. a picture of myself sure um so yeah so do you want to go first sure so this i finished um this is the sockhead cowl by um kelly mcclure and i did make some modifications this is for my niece she wanted she's into like these greens i guess lately this is living in my all-time favorite small project bag and it is knit with uh, Gigi Bonin, Bonin yarn in the colorway Limeade. And it is 80% merino, 20% nylon. It's 400 yards. The So I, I cast on with the German twisted cast on. Um, this is my cast on. I don't know what happened here. So that's actually really... Oh, no, that's my bind off. That's okay. my bind off. This is my cast on here. I think, so last time I made one of these, the cast on edge and the, the oh, you can see where it was folded, but that's okay. And the um, the bind off edge were very, very different. These are a lot closer. Yeah. Um, so I didn't do it, last time I did it, I didn't do a German twisted cast on. So I did that this time and I think it made all the difference. Um, it's, it's very, very stretchy. Yeah, it really is. It's my mm-hmm. favorite cast on for... Yep. Like a hat or yep. a um, socks or... I yeah. don't know that I've ever done it on a cowl. And what I did was the pattern, I think, has you knit for till it's like 20 inches or something like that. But it's for a six-year-old. So I thought that that would just be a little bit yeah. too much. So I... Um, I the Here's what I did. So I did the um, ribbing... For three and a half inches, two by two rib, three and a half inches. Then I, which was about 32 rows with my gauge. The body I knit six and a half inches. Okay. And then I did another three and a half inches and I bound off in pattern, um, like two by two yeah. rib. And it is, it's very stretchy. So you still. got, what? so, um, and then I blocked it. I didn't stretch it, but I soaked it and then I laid it flat on like our like a we use um the uh, a cooling rack cooling rack for like cookies and stuff so i just laid that and it 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 grew like two inches it so it's 15 inches oh that's perfect finished which is which is perfect yeah. i think for her you know even for you probably for me probably i haven't actually put it on but yeah yeah th- no that's a nice i mean i think it'll be nice yeah and she it'll be cute even if she doesn't like want to wear it and oh she'll totally wear it i know she's gonna wear it but so we're gonna see her today at my dad's little birthday party so i will um i will give that to her hopefully she'll like it i do have 24 grams left over so i'll hold on to this if i ever make her like a pair of socks or mittens or something it would be kind of cute to throw that throw this in there or Mm -hmm. something yeah to maybe kind of make them a little bit matchy 
I did use 16 inch fixed Addies. Um, the recommended needles, I think, and that was a three millimeter. Actually, let me check. Let me check here. This is another thing that we're actually doing a, a really good job with. Yes. Um, our, our notebooks. Our notebooks. So I used the Addies uh, US three fixed circular, sixteen inches. So that is that. That's my first one. Okay. Yeah, and the yarn is actually super soft. This would make really nice socks, I think. This brand. I've never heard of them before. We got this. Yeah, I've never heard of them. Yeah, either. we got this at Westport Yarns. So that's what I have. All right. So that's my, one number one. My first project is. All right. Was living in. Here? Let's see. Yes. Okay. Living in my Twinkle and Twilight Harry Potter bag. I love this I love, bag. It's one of my favorite bags. Yeah. Um, me too. But I just love our. Twinkle and Twilight mm -hmm. bag. So if you haven't checked out her bag shop, definitely do so. Yeah. Um, look at it. It's just so good. It is so good. Um, so this first project is a hat. I love this. You would. This was done so fast. Three days it took me to knit this. I was in love with knitting it. Everything yeah. about it. Um, this is the Eno hat by Jared Flood. It is an all over cable with a gathered um, top. Mm -hmm. This is knit out of brooklyn tweed loft so it's a fingering weight hat i knit it out of tent this is no it's a great tent color. it's no longer available oh. this is discontinued this is um some of the yarn that i bought from westport yarns oh, when i fun. cleared out the brooklyn tweed yeah yeah i did make the um here i'll put it on it's really great yeah like i made the large or the medium, so yeah. it's slouchy, but it's amazing. Like, I'm gonna cast on another one and I'm gonna do the small. Is it so? Here's I think that's a great size. Here's for the you. pattern, yeah. So, you know, that one looks more fitted, more like a yeah. Beanie. And I have that color actually, that's the color I was gonna use. That's Hayloft, uh -huh. and I have a skein it's similar to what you're wearing, yeah. I have a skein, no, that's gold. This is green, so. It is either uses one or two skeins of loft. If you go with the small size, you need one skein. So 260 yards. And this skein is 275. Oh. So you can get away with doing the small one with the one skein. I made the larger size. So I used two barely though. Like this is what I have left of my second yeah. skein. Um, so that's what the yarn It's so like. pretty. Up close. Really, really pretty. It green. really is. And it's got those like specks in it. Yeah. And this it's is like Tweety. on a... Okay. So I did the medium, which ends so up light. being 8.75 inches from brim to crown. Mm -hmm. You cast on with a US1 and then you knit... Um, so US1, which is a 2.25 millimeter, and then you knit the body of the hat with the US5, so a 3.75 millimeter. And it is a tubular cast on with a two by two rib. Yeah. No, one by one. With a one by one rib. And this tubular cast on, there's a couple ways to do it. This one is the one with scrap yarn. Oh. So it makes it actually a little bit easy. Mm-hmm. I did all of my cables without a needle, which was super impressive for me. Well, the yarn definitely allows that. Yeah, the yarn is, when you're knitting with it's it. It's beautiful, Kev. It's so sticky, and it it's a little, um, like, coarse when you're knitting with it. Yeah. It, it doesn't flow, um, or it can get stuck on your hands, like if your hands are dry yeah. type of thing. But, but so once you wash it and block it, it... It's really it softens nice. up so much, yeah. and it just made doing cables. It feels cables, so cozy. Yeah, and it made doing cables so easy without a cable needle. Right. Um, the decrease is really, really quick. It's a gather top. Oh, let's see. Oops. Which I'm still not super pleased with the hole at the top, but... I couldn't really get this tightened up. You use a separate scrap of yarn. Especially with this yarn. Because... A super wash yarn fingering or like a cotton. Yeah. So that it will slide through this because it is a very grippy yarn. You don't want to use the same one because it will get stuck. And then you break it. Um, 
Yes, which I've done in the which past. Which you've done, yeah. Um, I don't know what else. The decreasing on this was really interesting. I love the way that the cables, like if you can see how the cables just kind of, where's one? Cinched together almost. End. Yeah. Right? So like these two just end. So the oh, decreases yeah. were really, really nice to do. Um, the pattern is a charted pattern, but it's super easy to memorize. You have some stitch markers around. And to me, it was like knitting a self-striping sock with the stitch markers because it was like, oh, I finished a section. Right. Oh, I finished a section. Right. So it really made it feel like it was just like yeah, they flying give you little... through it. Mm -hmm. It was great. I, I thoroughly enjoyed knitting this pattern, and I will knit the small size. I think it's such a and good one. And you'll do the so, Hayloft one? Yeah, so way? I have... Um, where is it? I think it's in the bag still, isn't it? Oh. So I have this Hayloft yeah. loft. That'll be really pretty. Or loft. Hayloft. Mm -hmm. But I feel like I've used this before yes. in my gloves. Gloves. I was just going to say your fingerless mitts. So I think I already have some, but yeah. it wouldn't be enough to do the hat anyways. And I believe I only have this one skein in stash. So I think I'm going to do it again with this because I really love this color. And I love the way that it looked pictured. Um, yeah, a little bit more fitted. Yeah, here's where's the image. Like, I mean, I think one of these was tent, but here's like three different color options. Really, really nice. It's just so Well, I like nice. the one in the middle, so, that chocolatey. The burgundy? Burgundy. Red? Chocolate burgundy. Chocolate burgundy. So if you guys have any Brooklyn Tweed or something similar and you want a cabled hat, snatch this pattern up and knit this. I really can't say enough good things about it. It's one of my favorite knits of the year. Really? Well, we, it's only been three weeks. Oh, you were making a joke. Ha, ha, ha. But yeah. I was wondering why your face looked like that. So yeah, now I can wear it. It looks good on you. I I really do. I love this hat. Lovely. That's great. Yeah, it's a great... Uh, I can't. Let's put this back. Okay. Way to stay organized. Oh. oh. All right. That was my first step out. Okay, congratulations. Thanks. My second and my last FO is also a hat. This is the Harlow Worsted by Andrea Mowry. <sighs> Here it is. It's really nice. I am so happy, so proud of myself. This is a brioche hat. Um, look at the decreases. The decreases on this hat, so, I mean, here's, look great. Yeah. So I will tell you all about the yarn. Um, this hat fits like incredibly well. It's super snug. Um, like it hugs my ears. It's not like, um, oh, I can wear it like this too. A little slouch. It's not like um, super airy. Remember you showed your, yeah, yours with my Brook with Brooklyn Tweed Law. Yeah. So this is using, now this is my first time ever using this on this bag of Fancy Boy Designs. Now I showed this yarn as part of our acquisitions again. Oh, you know what? This is all of our Westport yarns. Well, so far. Well, so yeah. far. This is knit out of Hudson and West Forge which is a really awesome base. It's 70% Merino and 30% Corridale. It's 235 yards for 100 grams. It's worsted weight. Um, it's spun in Greenwich, New York and dyed in Pennsylvania and North Carolina, sourced in the US. Now it is a little bit on the pricier side. I think each one of these skeins was about $27 or so. It's pricey. Yeah. Um, Especially for worsted weight. How many, um, I'm sorry, did you say 100 grams? It is 100 grams. They are 100 grams. I mean, which is good. That's but, what. Yeah, I guess. I guess you're right. What you pay for indie dyed yarn for yeah. the most part. So, so this color, um, the it was which is the main color in the hat, um, is tobacco. And then the contrast color is golden leaf, gold leaf. So gold leaf batch Excuse number me. six. I'm not quite sure what the batch numbers is. I and wonder like if it's like a, the like dye a, lot or yeah, something. For sure. Um, 
I I am so impressed with this yarn. It is it's round. It's worsted spun. Um, is it? Yeah, oh, so worsted, it's a, not worn. worsted spun. So it's right. a little heavier, but it's super. It makes for such a squishy fabric. And the cool thing about brioche is that you can you know it's, it. it's all reversible, so you get a completely different hat. And actually, the decreases are much more evident. I think here. Yes. Um, that's what she says in the, I don't know if she said it in this pattern, Yeah, but in the but look at, regular, the first Harlow, she does sure. mention it. Now I think I might've, this is, so the decreases, if you were to get this pattern and you, you look at the decrease and you are like me and you're like, oh, what? No, I can't do this. I just can't. I'm just going to have a tube. I'll just have a, a brioche tube. The in the pattern, she's got links to videos on how to do everything, and she also for the decreases because you're decreasing four stitches at a time in four different sections. So your decrease round, you're decreasing down sixteen in sixteen stitches, which is a lot. Yeah. Um, and it's it's literally step by step, and then the first time you do it, you're like, oh, okay, that wasn't so bad at all. It's a cable cable decrease cable four decrease or whatever so you're like going back and forth where you're slipping the stitches over itself and you're pulling a stitch in the front it sounds very very complicated but if you were to do this take your time um i highly recommend this pattern it is a paid for pattern but i think it's only like six bucks or something it's it's way worth it just for the like tutorials that she has as well because I ca- this was also a tubular cast on. It was my very first time doing a tubular cast on, and it's a two color tubular cast on. So the edging, it really is a fully reversible edge. It's a beautiful. It's edge. a beautiful edge. So like this side, you have your main color. This side, you have the contrast color, which matches the hat, you know, perfectly. I cannot say enough about this. The Interesting thing is, and I think you brought this up last time, was, um, I'm going to wear this maybe, that purling takes up more yarn. yarn. And with brioche, you're, it, because it's reversible, you're really using the same amount of yarn, unless, like, especially on a hat like this, because there's no ribbing in a different color or whatever. So I ended... With the tobacco, my main color, which is um, with your main color, you primarily knit knit it around. There's 66 grams left over, which is huge. And then with the contrast Excuse color, me. there's 55 grams left over. Yeah, it's weird, right? So, yeah. So, it was really interesting that that was – and that's the only difference that I did. I don't know if I ever paid attention to that prior to yeah. this hat. Well, I'm trying to be more organized with everything. So, I put – you know, I have my notes and how much is left over. I use my Chowgoo's interchangeable US 5 and US 6. The, the first part of the hat, which you can't really see, is, um, well, maybe a little bit. From here to here is uh, knit on the smaller needles, and then the rest of the hat is knit on the larger needles. Yeah. And I use my interchangeable um, set in the round, and then I switch to Magic Loop, which was very scary to do brioche on Magic Loop. It was. Because... When you have to like slip and yarn over the that first stitch, you just have to be very careful with um, where you have the the yarns for the the contrast color and the main color. And I actually made a mistake. What is wrong with you? Go to bed. That's like the seventh <laughs> yawn. Third. No. Count yes. people. Give me a number. Third. I'm tired. I'm sorry. So uh, anyway, what I ended up doing was at the start of the round, when I was magic looping, I must have caught the contrast color in the first, um, like my first stitch. So I ended up having to cut the yarn because there was no way, and I wasn't taking it back on magic loop with brioche decreases. There's no way in hell. So I ended up having to cut the yarn and then spit felting it together, which thank hey, goodness it's a you do what you can. Yeah, but I I love it. I think it's great. I love this side, and I you know this side is much more like in your um, face. Yeah, I was gonna say that side's more. Isn't that cool? It is. It's like I kind of wish I. I think mine. it's super cool. 
th- to have that as my main side. But I mean, you can because it's no, fully but reversible. I, but I did my black as my main color. Yeah. I wish I did my black as my set contrast color, and sure. then this way on the inside, it would have been my main color. And I guess you could fold up the brim as well. I didn't. I didn't even try. You could. Yeah, and the, it's super warm. Yeah, that it's going to be good. super warm. So I am very happy with this. I will absolutely be making. I can make more of these. I did this in a day. It's what well, two? You I test s- it on one day and then finish it the next. Yeah. Oh, it, like a 24, 24 hours. hours. Yeah. I didn't okay. knit straight for twenty four hours, but yes. But yeah, that type of thing. Yeah, I started it one day and I um, I started it on the sixteenth and I finished it on the seventeenth. Um, and then something too with this hat, what I do, and oh. you did not do this, which I'm, which is really great, but I find it very hard when with that style of tubular cast on, to, um, keep my stitches straight because they do twist. Mm-hmm. So what I do when I um did mine is I use a long straight needle, a mm. DPN. And just bunch them up just to try to keep them straight if you find that it's too hard to do it with a cord. So I found that, yeah, the cord does kind of twist. Your stitches do end up getting twisted. But as you're knitting it, you just have to know what the stitch looks like because yeah. it's going to be like a, you know, because you're, you're yeah. knitting it through the back loop. So you just have to make sure you know what what, mm-hmm. what the legs look like. I think also um, I just got lucky. So anyway. All right, good job. Thank you. Oh, oh yeah. and I made um, size two. There are three sizes to this, and because of the nature of brioche and how stretchy it is, yeah. I guess I mean you really don't need a million I, different sizes. Yeah, I think if you typically wear a large hat, to go down a size with this, because yeah. my first one I did the large and it felt yeah. too big. The second one is a much better yeah. fit, and I did the si- second size. So um, the size two fits a head circumference of twenty-one to twenty-two inches. Okay. There you are. The more you know. Cool. Um, this is not the long one. This goes. So back. these would make. I think I would love to have like gloves. Yeah, you or should. Or mittens. You know what I want to do? I want to actually. I think I'm going to reach out to Caleb and see. He did those. Oh, and see, I was writing. I had my card. He he had he did those like convertible mittens. Andrew Mowry has a pair of those. You know, and you can like fold those, fold up the. Thing. Andrea Mowry has one. She does? Yeah. It's, I, I actually think it, it has three different options in it. Um, I was looking at them the other day. One for fingerless, one for full-on mitts, oh. and one for conver- convertible, all in the same pattern. And really? I believe it might be worsted weight. If okay. I'm I'll have to look into that. Um, all right. So my next one is I finished my socks. Yay. These are beautiful. Living in my Le Garçon bag. Le Garçon. Um, I knit these out of... Let's get the yarns. My needle so i knit these on my chagu lace and guys i don't know if you've noticed this if you are a chagu purchaser from amazon we have all had the complaint where they cover the needle size yes and their labels sucked yeah. they've changed the labels so look at the label now but it probably depends on where you get it from and they didn't cover up the size there no they did a good job no i've noticed they must be recently. knitters I, so it their label tells you what size it is. Oh, so it does? I, yes. So I'm using a US 0 2 millimeter oh. is what I use this time for mine. So yeah, just a Lovely. little update on that because I know that people have made comments and we've made comments about it. Yeah. So here's the finished pair. They look so good. I love I love what you did with the heels and the toes. So. Want me to hold one? Yeah, please. Thank sure. you. So this main color is from Wool and Zanash. This is uh, Fancy Schmancy Pumpkin. Pumpkins. This yarn is 90% Superwash Targi and 10% Nylon. It's a three-ply. 411 yards for 100 grams. Mm-hmm. And my contrast color, or for my heels and my toes, is it's Amanda Knits. Yeah. And Paul Pine. It's a beautiful colorway. This is her um, Cantus base. So it's an 8020. And it is a two ply, if I'm not mistaken. So let's talk about the cast on. Cast on is a German twisted cast on. 
I feel like that's been our cast on of choice lately. It it has been mine for socks yeah. probably for a good year. So what I did for my cast on y'all is I wrap my yarn around my needle, you know, to try to gauge how much yarn I'm going to need. And a German twisted cast on eats up way more yarn than a long tail. Right. So I wrapped it and then I, 20 stitches, took that off. And then I counted to, I, until I had enough yarn to cast on 140. And I did that so I could also keep track and try to keep my stripes as even as possible. But you did a really good job. Yeah, they're pretty, I mean, I think they're pretty spot on. So I cut my yarn so that it started with the green. I can see where the two colors came together and cut it right there. Yeah. Wrapped and got my tail to cover me for 140 stitches. And once I did that, honestly, it um, left me with about a six inch tail. Nice. And I cast on 72 stitches Mm -hmm. and did a two by two rib for 20 rows. And then I knit, I think it's seven and a quarter inches for my leg. And then five inches for my foot. I did an afterthought heel. I watched just to remember how to do it because it's been a while. I watched Kirby Werby's oh, yeah, video. She, yes. she does a really good video. I forgot about that. Um, use her tip of leaving two stitches on each side so you don't yeah. get that hole. And then I did a regular toe. So I love the way the brown looks in it. I was going to use the blue from my no, this Stephen is... West shawl, but I think that this is better contrast. Yeah, and it's much, it's fun. It's, it's a little more fun. Totally. I was going to say funner, but that's not a word. So, yeah, what else do I have to say? Um, Did you say that you knit four, four rows? Just Oh, no, no. That's right. I, so I knit four extra rows of... Once I cut in heel. my heel, I did four extra rows just before regular. I started my decreases. Yeah. Because I always have an issue in my instep. Mm-hmm. And um, I wanted to make sure it fit well. And these yeah. are probably some of the better fitting socks that I have. Mm-hmm. So sometimes, like if you don't have enough fabric for your heel, it's super tight it gets, here. Can get tight here. I still think Just it a is. Little honestly, tip. I still think it's a bit tight. Um, there, you can see the stitches are a little more spread out, but it's just a beautiful um, color. Yeah. And yeah, you did a really yeah. good job. My goal is to knit at least one pair a month. Okay. So this is my January socks. So we'll see if I can keep that up. Get and... going. Yeah, beautiful. I love working with this yarn. It's the first time I've done her fingering with yarn. Me too. And I this Targi is like so yeah. good. And I think it's 85.15, right? No, 90.10. 90.10? Yeah. Wow. That's why it feels so nice. All right. All right. And what you got next? Is, so that's all my FOs. That's all my FOs as well. Right, so the next are whips. Whoops, whoops. I have two whips. I have you three. Have, so you go first and okay. you have three. I will show you my socks. I showed these last time. Uh, I did finish one, kind of, kind, kind of, because I'm I'm waiting for the um, the minis to okay. co- to update to go back into the shop so I can do an afterthought heel. But this isn't this fun. It is. I'm not for nothing. Why don't you just do a solid heel? Because I love. I know, I know. Isn't it? I yeah. think it's cute. I think that'll yes. be so cute because I love that color. Me too. I was you know so excited reminds, to see this. It reminds me of two for some reason Sesame Street. Oh, maybe. Well, this is this is also um, Woolens and Nosh, and this is in Sprout, which is so fun because you have oh, and people said what the stuff is in here. Yeah, per, Paralite? Paralite? Yeah. Um, it actually um gives some like takes up some space so that it can aerate a little bit better and air can get down in there and thank you all of you green thumbers that's great so um this is really pretty it's a 10 stripe repeat so it was really easy for me to kind of keep track of where i was going Mm. i tried to um to match that little stripe there at the bottom i didn't have enough to make um because i wanted to make the socks super matchy this is my second one obviously um, but I did a really good, I think I did a pretty good job matching them up, matching them up. Yeah. Two. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. So I wanted Absolutely. to leave and it was great because I didn't have to wind off any additional colors cause mm. it's a such a, cause it's a 10 color repeat. I would have had to like wind yeah, this entire sure. section off before I started the next one. 
but I wanted that little peak to kind of complete the sock. In that case, there. if you had to, I would have moved your my heel heel down. Yeah, I guess I could have and made your leg longer so that you weren't like yeah. wasting the yarn. So I'll be putting my heel in here. Uh, I'll do. Oh, a, you do one in the middle too. A cut. Uh, what do you mean? A stitch marker in the middle of the row that you're gonna, or is that yeah. the row that you're cutting? No, I put it in the middle as well because when you're picking up the stitches, sometimes the stripes are not straight across. It might, you know, it might yeah, be a stitch I below. See. So I just, it's a check for myself when I'm doing it. So when I get to the halfway point, I should be picking up that leg as well, and gotcha. I, it'll keep me on track. If that makes any sense. No. So sure. I also did a um, German twisted cast on there. I love how even the stitches look. I'm using, so I didn't say this last time, but these are Addy Easy Knits fixed circulars, and they have the different size needles. So one of them, this one is longer than this one. I think one's three and one's two. Maybe. The cord is obviously not um, super flexible chowgu, but when you're knitting in a round, like this it's totally it's totally fine um and yeah I've, I've been loving it so far i have so i was thinking like maybe i could just do the heel but i definitely don't have enough i have oh yeah yeah so after i was done i had 59 grams left over of the main skein so i know i'll have enough to do the same size um sock i'll have like six grams left over or whatever nine grams left over but the mini after after i knit the the uh cuff and the toe i only had a gram left so because the toe took up about five grams of yarn i and the heel would be very similar if not a little bit more i wouldn't have had enough so i have to wait Okay. Yep. That's it. And for my toe, I decreased down to 14, and then I kitchenered. Oh, on, I decreased down guy. to 16 for my toe and my heel. Yeah. Um, And you're using US Zero, right? As I well, am. two millimeter. Yeah, two millimeter. And that's all I have to say about that. Okay. So my first whip is living in my hide and hammer. But I do love this. Leg our song bag. Boy, we're I'm twinsies use, this episode. I'm going to use actually. the heck out of this bag. I keep getting all of these. I get them all the freaking time. These fake, fake freaking text AT&T messages. AT&T says you paid your December bill. Here, click here for your prize. So this is a new cast on, and I'm not sure where I am with it. Like, I'm not sure if I'm loving it yet. So it may not be around next podcast. But we'll oh, see. but I love it. So let's get all the let's get all the stuff out of this bag. So this I like is that a creamer. brand new um, cow that I'm knitting. I initially bought this yarn at oh, yeah. New Haven when we were doing yeah. our shop hop, the actual shop hop. I don't think the preview. I think when we went, we went for the shop hop. Right. So this cowl is called Mosaic Cowl. It's gorgeous. By, I have no idea because Weaver Knits. <laughs> no, Weaver Knits. Because there's no name on here, but I think, I'm pretty sure it's Weaver Knits. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. We're gonna say Weaver Knits, y'all. So you didn't write it down? No, but it, see, it's down. I there. feel like your your notebook already is starting with quite a lot of no information on the first page, and now you're down to this much. No judgment. So, it is this. Yeah, it's beautiful. By Weaver Knits, it beautiful. says it in the bottom right corner. I want to show this one. I am making this version, the double length. Oh, it's so gorgeous. The yarns that I'm knitting with, my main color is called, um, this is by Primrose Yarn. Main color is True Calm, and this is in the Roan DK. So it's a three-ply DK for yeah. 230 yards. It's 60% superwash merino and American superwash merino and 40% domestic non-superwash merino. Really? I wonder why they would why that is I don't know like that. My second um, color is their Homestead Worsted and the colorway Burnout. So actually, I'm gonna do this. Oh, that's so funny. 
I just got caught on the sock blockers. Um, this will be easier. So this is burnout. That's really pretty. And then, oh, I see. It creates like a marled look. Yeah. This has that like, what's that company? Spin cycle-y type of look. Oh, yeah, it does. And then this is True Calm. Yeah. So really nice green. It is. Like a tealy green almost. Mm. So here's where I'm at. I did the first section. It is a mess because this like the yarn just falls off the cake. Um, so here's kind of where I'm at. I just started. It's a huge cast and I cast on three times. I oh, think it's I like see. 260 so have... stitches. Yeah. So it is some mosaic knitting. The thing that I don't like is like you can barely see the stitches there. Right? Like it's so hard to see. Yeah, but some I of think them. once it's blocked and relaxed, I think that's where it's really you're gonna really be able to see all that. And what's different for me too is with Yeah, because that's that's gonna be that's gorgeous. I don't know. We'll see. I may continue. But for me, a lot of the mosaic knitting that I've done is um your second color, you knit your first row and then purl your second. And mm -hmm. it makes it stand out a lot more against the slip stitches yeah. of your to so you use your contrast color, knit the first row, purl your second, and you're slipping the main color for those rows. So it really makes those two, that contrast color pop. Here so far, you've just been um, knitting them. So it's kind of in the background, not in the foreground like sure. I'm used to. Sure. Um, I think the colors are beautiful. I, I do too. And I believe, I don't remember if they, the sample they had in the shop was definitely the small sample. And I love the way that it looked. I just wanted something different. But... I have no idea what else I would use this for. So like ripping it out, part of me feels like it's a waste because then this yarn's just going to sit because it has no other intention. And, you know, we're trying to knit with intention this year. So this is what the yarn was bought for. Why does so, this look different than this? Because they're two. So the color changes. So this is the, oh. I've already gone through that color on this skein or this colors on the inside. Oh, so it's like a fade almost? Yeah, that's kind of what Spin Cycle does too, where your yeah. colors fade throughout the skein. Oh. It's not the same color all the way through. Maybe I should show up for when you talk next. Yeah, please. Feel free to rewatch this episode. When At least I'm not yawning. I'm just kidding. So, yeah, I, I don't know. I don't know what I'm going to do yet with this. I, I I don't know. Oh, sorry, I kicked the camera. Yeah. I think it's knit in six sections. Um and like I said, I'm only done with section one. Yeah. So I think maybe, as you get more fabric and it stretches out and yeah, maybe too it's early to a tell. Chilly in here, no? That's because we're up here and we've been up here for like an hour and the heat won't pick on. Oh. So we're, which is fine. We have you have a shawl and a hat and I have a hat. I haven't. I, have, I know. Should I wear my hat though? Whatever you want to do, princess. I know. I kind of want to, but and guys, this bag is so delicious, great. amazing, delicious, delicious. Scrum, diddly, diddly, um, Scrum diddly umptious. Um, yeah, I can show my bag or my project because I'm using that bag as well. So the cool thing is with these bags, you just, you know, I roll it down so I can just knit right out of them. Yep. This is a new cast on. I was waiting for this yarn to come. Oh, yeah, that's right. I had no idea what you were talking about. Yeah. I, um, this, so... Um, Kevin knit, showed the shawl last week that he knit, um, for our friend Beth and her sister who they are very close, um, friends, friends. Of ours. yeah, of ours. And they're very close, you know, they have a really siblings. close. Yeah. But not all siblings. Right I, know, there, no, but I know. Anyway. So the four of us are like, we always have such a good time and they are so knit worthy. So Kevin knit the shawl for Beth and I am knitting the pure, I knit pure joy. Yeah, Beth. thank you. I couldn't remember the name. You're welcome. That's and then I'm, I'm knitting for her sister, Megan, whom we call Moogie. And I, she's like me, like the kind of like simple, although you probably couldn't. You do not, don't say no. like me, like simple. You get colors and you want to knit with all I the know, grays. I know, but I do, I, I don't wear them. Oh, well, grays, I want to wear, I want to knit all with all the grays. No, you want to knit with all the colors. Oh. Of the wind. Mm-hmm. 
<laughs> That's um, what's her face? <laughs> All right, so I am doing the folded po- easy folded poncho by Church Mouse. Yarns. I always want to say Church House. Me too. Maybe it is Church House. No, it's Church Mouse for sure. Oh, Church Mouse Classics. It's the easy folded poncho. It is a paid for pattern. You have the options to do this one, which has like the cowl. I kind of feel like you should do that. I think I'm going to. And then you have this one, which is also really pretty as well. No, do the cowl. Very simple. Do, yeah. So yeah. I bought enough yarn to do that. So um, she liked, uh, she wanted like a darker color yarn. Um, and Aaron from Fiber Hustle is knitting a sweater with this City Tweed DK. And we no, had he's a, using Aaron, but. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Sorry, not the DK, but the City Tweed. Um, it's the same makeup. And then we have a skein as well, which I don't think we've ever used, but it always felt so soft to me when I touched it. So I bought um, 10 balls of this from Knit Picks. It was, it's very, very affordable. It is 55% merino, 25% super fine alpaca, and 20% Donegal Tweed. Um, it is a DK weight. It is the softest... It is. I, I can't believe how soft this is without it even being washed or anything. And I got this is the colorway Orca. It's like really nice, like gray. Yeah, it's a nice medium gray. Medium I gray, would say. I would say so too. With yeah. some like beige tweedy mm-hmm. bits in it. And this is just easy for right. Now. You know, it's. I mean, it's called the easy folded poncho. It is. I did a what was the cast provisional cast on. And this is what I have so far. I did 10 inches. Oh, that's not bad. Yeah. So, thanks. Um, because it's just really stockinette, it's, you know, it does roll up quite a bit. But mm-hmm. this is what I have. I think this is going to look yeah. so nice when it's done. I really like the done. way this looks, the tweed in this. Don't, I, I am so, so happy with this. I have purchased their tweed before in yeah. something else, and I wasn't happy with the... The size of the tweed bits in it, the uh-huh. donkle, it, it was too big. Too big? I think these it works for the, this. These are a really nice size. Yeah, I think it works for this. Um, So interesting. The This is the bottom, obviously. This is where I'm at right now. But it, it rolls up, so it was easier for me to show. Um, so you see your my provisional cast on here. And if you recognize this yarn, it's because the ball of yarn was right next to me and i didn't feel like getting up and going upstairs but you have to leave yourself like a 36 or three meter long tail to so that you can um probably like cast off or bind bind off off yeah so i'm like what the hell do i do and i've got this giant like dingle hopper hanging down so it kind of gets in my way a little bit to be honest but it's okay pin it I would, oh, now that it's larger, I can. Yeah, like... Like, hey, I can just pin, pin it, like, right here. Yeah. Ooh, I'm going to sneeze again. Nostrobia. Did I... Wait, have I sneezed yet? No, I yeah, yawned. Oh, you yawned a few times. Oh, that's a good <laughs> idea, Kev. Okay, I'll pin it. Great idea. So, I am very happy with this. I think this is going to look... <coughs> bless you. I think this is going to look really nice when Thank it's you. all finished. Excuse me. Yeah. Um, And, you know, it's easy. It's TV knitting. It is stockinette, mm. so you know you have, like, you go really, really fast. It's smooth. The yarn is so easy to knit with. Um, so I'm I'm a faster knitter with my or faster yeah faster with my knits, but I'm getting really fast at, with pearls as well. And I I'm starting to find that I enjoy purling. It's got a whole. It's like a different flow. I just watched a video the other day on Norwegian purling because I saw yeah I saw that too. And then somebody... I saw knitting backwards. I watched a. a like to knit back but norwegian purling looks like it works better for continental knitters oh these are knit on my chow goos the I interchangeables again. in the you are a mess today i really am stop watching us <laughs> this is a four millimeter six us six um chow goos on my five inch uh tips and this bag is just so incredible i can't say enough about it i've got the the project and 10 skeins of yarn in here yeah granted they're like the balls which i also appreciate because I didn't have to wind them yeah. back up. I'm yeah, knitting. the bag's nice. I would get another hide and hammer bag Me too. in the future. Yeah, like once we save up a little bit more. The um, I'm just knitting as it as it is. It's it's perfect. Perfect. All right. And that is 
that is that. My last whip is a really simple whip. You guys have seen this a bunch. I just cast on... I needed something easy, so I just cast on one of these. And this. Well, that's an FO, no? No. No, this. Oh, you... Oh. I cast it one of these. This is the half half and a half dishcloth by Pearl Soho yeah. with their buttercup cotton. Buttercup, buttercup. I'm doing it in the... Oh, that's lollipop. Cedarwood is that color. I'm going to do it in cedarwood and evening blue. No, Ooh. cedarwood and gray cloud. So, yeah, not far. But it's a really simple knit. It's that type where um, when you don't know what you want in it, just pick it up. I feel like... I don't know who we were watching recently. They were talking about losing their mojo. Mm. Oh, we were watching Knitters League, right? Well, and yeah. they had talked a lot about like losing their mojo and not having it, um, you know. And um, you hear a lot for people that it's either that it's hats that can get it back. Another one for me is dishcloths because yeah. I don't have to think about it. I just it's just knits. You know, this one is um, some wrap and turns, but. Is that knit on a US 3? Yeah, 3.25 millimeter. I'm a Chow Goose. Chow Goose? And it's in my Beard of Pearl bag. I have four skeins of this yarn in here to go through. Um, I actually think I'm going to cake it all up. Put all the yarns in my chip basket. Um, so that I just have them there and then I can interchange the colors however I want because I have eight skeins of this yarn to knit. 100 gram skeins. Dish claws out of. And that's all I have. I have one more. This has become my favorite, um, my favorite knit, my favorite project to work on. This, speaking of, this is living in my chip basket. These cannot be purchased, purchased. unfortunately. But, you guys, I cast on the brioche adventure shawl you didn't have that last time no oh no look so this is what i have so far here i got this on thanks this is what i have so far um it is so much freaking fun so you use the um it's like meant for advents but you can use you know really whatever you want to I love how they're all working together because the main color, aw, he's, he's sleeping, Tarquin. The I'm sorry, the contrast color from the row before becomes the main color for, for the, the next. next row, and then vice versa. So it's so much fun, and I'm having a lot of fun picking the the next colors. This is um. This is Yarn Cafe Creation and Dragon Horde Yarns um, Christmas at Hogwarts Year 5 Advent. And I put all of them in the basket here. And what I'm doing is I'm trying to alternate and do one skein of Yarn Cafe Creations and one oh. skein of... Because it's a mother-daughter. Right. They each have their own um, dyeing companies, but they work... It's so cute how, how it is. They also have a podcast as well. They well, I they haven't podcasted yeah, since while. before COVID. Yeah. Um, Tristan was doing like some vloggy type style ones uh -huh. here and there. Right. So I've been trying to you know alternate and find you know find some things that are contrasty that would like work together. Not really paying any other mind except for do they you know do they work together? I'm um, I am keeping track of what I'm doing though. So I did. I do have a Ravelry page for this, and I am writing down, because if you have an advent from them, and you kind of want to see what it looks like, I am keeping track here for like what I'm doing. So yarn, the, the first color that I use, that gray there, is Department of Mysteries, and then the next one is The Boy That Lies, and then Room of Requirement, Rescuing Mr. Weasley, and then the main color that I'm working on now, or the contrast color that I'm working on now, is uh, Tonks. And that's this color here. But isn't it fun? Or Tonks. Right? So you see that? Like, this was my contrast color yeah. from the row before, and now it's turning into my main color up here. It's just so clever. 
And this is by Jonathan Tallo, who just came out with a new brioche pattern, his first pattern release of 2022. I can't say the name because I can't really pronounce it. It's uh, Norwegian. Yes. But I will show it to you because I did purchase it. He was having a sale. Um, I'm going to try and I'm probably going to get it wrong. Arsringer? Arsringar? This. Here. You mean. And um, he says you can use two colors up to like four or six colors. Nice. Yeah. And what he did also was with the pattern he released. And he kind of, he did it in this one too. If you're new to brioche, some like tips and tricks, which I really appreciate. Yeah, and I think a great thing for brioche is doing it with two colors. Yeah. Oh, Best way to learn. Yeah, Best way to learn. 100%. I agree. The, and so the cool thing about this is that you have a, a little bit of a garter break, or like knitting, you know, you just, you're knitting six rows here. It's a six row garter um, section, which is great. And it's knit on the bias. It's knit on the bias. Yeah. Yeah. So you never have more than like give or take one or two stitches before you do your decreases. You never have more than like a hundred and... I'm just going to make up a number, but something like 110 stitches. And you don't have to decrease or increase in brioche. Not in brioche. Right. No. It's perfect. So, yeah, so that's that would be a, it is a great stash buster just in general. Huge. Yeah, if you have... I mean, you could do these with... We have. We could probably do them with all of the minis that we have, or leftover yarn that we yeah, have. Yeah, for sure. Um, And so, yeah, I'm just... The second... I'm starting to use the paper plastic bags just to... To keep them separated because they start to get a little bit twisted up. But I could not be happier with this project. It is so much freaking fun. You know what um, would be really good for that instead? Maybe I'll look to buy that. So remember how Lisa has those, um, just the cloth bags. I forget. Um, Lisa who? 72 Stitches. She showed them on her podcast. She showed them on um, her podcast. This was months ago. And they're like a, a linen type of, they're just small bags. Instead of wasting. Like a muslin bag? Yeah. Instead of wasting plastic bags. Yeah. Because I always feel bad wasting plastic right. bags for something like that. Sure. Those might be good to have. But they're reusable. Some, I re we reuse No, them. we reuse them, but still. Yeah. But that might be good. Um, no, it we could. We said not to do that because we put all of our leftovers in plastic bags. Right. Um, that we wouldn't do that with those because then we can't see them. Correct. Because um, we put them in there with their yarn mm -hmm. tags. So, but you know what? I bet something like that, and I bet we could probably use our little yarn condoms. Yeah, you could too. True. Do I have any in here? I don't think we do in there. Where do we keep? Um, I don't know. That's actually. okay. All right. So, so that's, that is. I think those are all of the whips. Whoops. All the whips. So before right. we get into happy or all posts and breaking the bank. Um. Like I said, I, I'm going to have a shop update. We are. Next week. Yes. I'm going to do it a little bit differently, though. I'm going to do it on a Friday evening. So it's going to be next Friday, the 28th, 28th at 7 p.m. Eastern time. No, that's a lie. 6 p.m. Eastern time. Okay. 6 p.m. Eastern time on Friday, January 28th. I'm going to do a shop update on Etsy. The Etsy shop link is below. Um, it's the most yarn that I've ever put up as of right now um and this is just because i this is yarn that like i dyed some of it in november yeah there are going to be some holiday colorways correct in so, here hopefully people are still in the mood because they're gorgeous at some of the colors so first up speaking of holiday this is holly jolly so just some green red and white yeah and i think there's no there's no speckles mm -mm. this is 75 25 so that what do we call this base? Oh, Achilles sock. So Holly Jolly. And then this one is gorgeous. Peppermint bark. So brown. This is going to micro stripe yeah. um, because the brown's all in one area yeah. for the most part. And then it's just um, uh, white. Yarn's not really white. It's more of a cream color with some red speckles on it. Oh my God. It's so good. It's my um, favorite. And then. Two that I've dyed before that I've redone. This one is, I think, this is yellow grass, grass beak. beak. Um, the skein's really messy. I just literally skeined it up. I have to reskein and cut some mm -hmm. strands off. But yeah, so this, and then, is it this one? No. Okay. So this one, what's really fun about this 
the color that's in here is like it looks gray but it also has these really dark greens and the yellow and some black yeah and that's all that's used for this is yellow and black dye so i was just messing around with that one time to see what happens and this happened so i like seeing that was that him mm -hmm. oh here he comes next up this one is crap rhubarb right rhubarb rhubarb so this again is an interesting one because this is yellow and black hi buddy and then a purple dye used to get this like and it, you get these green bits in there hey baby um so this one i think these two i dyed again because i people have contacted me who've knit with these and i just they love look the really they cool up, yeah so i wanted to dye them or see if i can replicate that sure um last year with the dyeing i think i wasn't like i wrote stuff down but not very well so what I've been trying to do is go back and see colors that I enjoyed dyeing, see if I can replicate them and actually come up with a recipe for it. So that's been kind of fun. And then this one's really fun. So this, again, was yellow, black, and purple to get this color. So then what I decided to do is take those three colors and just mix them all together and see what happened. And then I got this color. So this color is a really like orangey brown. Yeah. And this one I'm going to call Chestnut. Oh, it beautiful. reminds me of the book that I'm reading. Um, one of the Druid's forms is a, I think a chestnut horse. Yeah. Mare. Uh, mare. Chestnut mare. So that's where this one kind of was inspired from. Then when I first started dying again a couple weeks ago, I was just messing with three of the same color. So three different shades of blue, three different shades of green, and three different shades of yellow. So this one is a nice, like, has some really bright bits and some goldy bits. So this one, as soon as I hung it up to dry, I thought of Ron Weasley. So this is Sunshine Daisies. And then this was three separate greens, which is really, really It's really, pretty really pretty. pretty. Um, this reminded me of, again, the book that I'm reading right now. So this is Druid's Grove. Mm -hmm. And then these are two new ones that I just died this week, which I'm really actually, I'm really happy. impressed. I, I, I'm, I'm really loving, happy with these. Yeah, me too. So this one's going to be called, uh, Candy Hearts. It is, um, like some peach and pinks and some speckles and some white bits. I think this one's really, really Me too. pretty. I'm actually really pleased with this one, it, seeing it skeined up. Um, and then this one, I really like this one too. I might want to keep a skein. I don't know what this name is yet. I think I'm going to look. This is probably going to be named after a stone, like a gemstone. Because oh. it's kind of like jasper -y maybe. Maybe it's jasper. That's really pretty. So this has, I told Ray, I was going to mess around with blue, brown, and gold, mm -hmm. I think. Um, and then this is what I came up with. So what's really nice is when the colors just hit at the right spot, you get like this patina color. Yeah. Um, you get some nice, like, you have a little orangey bit in there. Really nice browns and some white bits and some beige and some light blue and then some gray so it's just the way that they just play with each other is so nice so this one is beautiful it is beautiful it's... all of them you've done a really really good job i'm really like i forgot i want a skein of this to make my i'm going to try Christmas to dye socks already i'm going to try to dye more up tomorrow of that yeah. so that i showed on instagram and um it was it had a really great response i have eight skeins of this um, so I'm going to try to dye up some I mean, more. I think like whatever you knit in it, it doesn't have to, it's, it's not going to scream Christmas, but if you, no. if you say it is, then you're like, oh my God, yeah, you're right. So yeah, no, I'm going to try, I'm going to try some so more of that because nice. I want to see if I could replicate yeah. that to throw that into These speckles like, our though, like the book. way that you did the speckles are fantastic. You know, what's like for me, what's hard, um, with dying is I always wonder and here we'll undo this one just to like talk about it. Um, you know, is I always wonder if I have like too much white left, but then I look at a, where is it? Um, oh, here. 
But then this is one of my favorite skeins right. by Mesa Skeins. Yes. I love this. Me too. To pieces. And it's white with speckles. Right. And I hear and I'm like, am I leaving too much white in my skein? But this is literally this is more one creamy, of my... But you're right. Yes. But this, right. It's a creamy color, but it's... This is eggnog, by the way. <gasps> oh, my God. Eggnog. Oh, my gosh. And peppermint bark. Oh, my God. We should do a little Mace of Skeins needles at the ready marriage. <laughs> <laughs> How cute. But, like, it looks white here but it's not it's really got some peach tones to it so yeah. when i look at something like this i'm like oh man is that too much and that's kind of what happened with this too so i'm and you know just looking at it, i'm like oh is that too much white right there mm-hmm. so i second guess my Don't color guess and it. speckling all the time but here if you want to see this is kind of how this one will knit up so again it's going to be like a micro stripey type of thing because mm-hmm. all of this peach is really in one section and then the rest is a whole bunch of different shades of pinks like there's a lot of pink speckles in, speckle in there yeah 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 um and there's some like light speckling out on this side and i think it's just really interesting how it kind of you know how it comes together and how they they it looks different on every skein but like it looks different from opened up like that then when you skein it up and then when you knit it up all three look so yeah. different it's um it really is and what's really cool about just dyeing in general is every dyer could take these three same colors and come up with something completely differently yes. based on the dye method um the yarn base the acid base so it's it's really fun i've just i've really forgot how much i enjoyed it and yeah, you've maybe been it's having because a lot of fun, I wasn't able to for a month. Sure. And getting back into it and trying, I think, two different methods of dyeing this time around. Like, this was a different one. And I don't think any of... Oh, and this one. These, I used two different methods. Um, So this one, like, they're both equally yeah. fun, but this one was a lot of fun. Yeah. A lot of fun. And this one I really, really like. So we have a lot of work ahead of us to yeah we're gonna photographs prep, yeah I've been photographing them getting those um, ready stained up and printed and yep all that. stained up and labeled so yeah. some have labels already others don't yeah but yeah it will be so next Friday the twenty eighth at six p.m. Eastern time will be a shop update um, yeah so that'll be fun great and let's talk about. Um, Owl Post. We have one Owl, Owl Post. Post. We do. This was a hell of a surprise. Too. This was such a surprise. So, I think you were talking about weaving. We showed we off were... the dishcloth. The, I'm sorry. That, the pot oh, holders that, that we got. Woven pot holder. Yeah. So this just showed up on our doorstep, and ooh, that's bitter. Ooh, ah, t- ooh tangy. What's bitter? I have the cherry um, pomegranate in it. Oh, it's it like not, the water shouldn't bitter. taste bitter. I meant um, sour. Yeah, or tangy. Mm. Like a puckers. Especially after drinking the peppermint, peppermint bark. Mm. Yeah. So it was wonderful. It was a gift. Um, we, I don't know how else to reach out to you. I did send you one of those thank yous from Amazon. So hopefully you got it. Um, but Melissa, thank you. I don't know how else to. We tried searching you on Ravelry and stuff like, or yeah, on Instagram. We were at, yeah, we were because I wanted to send you a thank you, but I couldn't. So, so I hopefully you are watching. Hopefully you're watching. So thank you so much. But look what she sent. Do you know what's really funny too? What wouldn't this be Is, great to do with Reese? Yeah. Oh yeah. Right. Um, people have. Well, that smells good. Yeah, we had a couple comments, um, and they had directed us to, and I forget the name off the top of my head, but mm-hmm. I think I saved it, and I had saved one of these because they were like oh the looms are here and they're on sale yeah and you can make up to I 25 projects it. and then this came within a couple days so thankfully yes. i didn't buy that one i'm so excited to try this me too we've it's been sitting downstairs kid. we got it like like two days after the podcast or yeah, something very it came shortly very after. shortly after so it's been sitting downstairs waiting for us to uh bring it up and bring it up and it. talk about it so we can now start using it yeah this would be really great to do with emma and reese yeah for sure for sure yeah. that'd be fun so thank you so much. Yes. That was so sweet of you. I know we were. Li- it was really, and I hopefully you Ray, got the thank you. When you opened it, you're like, I didn't order anything. You're like, no, really, I didn't order. It. And then you opened it up. You're like, I did not. Order I was this. like, I swear, I didn't order this. And, and I'm like, what is this? And it opened. Um, yeah, it was really. It was really it was. a pleasant. 
Nice surprise. Thank so you speaking so much. of Amazon, guys, this is a little tangent. We've discovered Dots Pretzels. <gasps> oh, so our Thursday night midnight God. group. Apparently they live with Dots yeah. Pretzels. So um, that is not we, common here in the, the here North. in Connecticut. I've never seen them. Mm-mm. So I've been ordering off Amazon. We've already gone through two bags of Dots, family size, um, and I just had two more bags delivered. We yesterday. should have brought some. We should bring some over to my parents' house. No. That's selfish of you. <laughs> That's really selfish of you. Like a little bag? Like that little bag? No, like a bag of, like a bag. The big bag? Yeah. For snacks. Those would be good in dip. I bet you can dip them too. I actually thought about, mm, they would be good in dip. I wouldn't dip them though. You're not a dipper. No, I'm not a dipper. Yeah. All right. So let's talk about purchases. Okay. Guess what, y'all? No yarn purchases. But there have been other um, breaking the bank purchases. Totally. So let's go here. Let's do these first. Okay. So we both decided we needed some more um, hand care. And we're going to talk about hand care for a moment. Mm-hmm. Do you guys ever notice after like that your knitting needle, sometimes your yarn doesn't move oh. as smoothly? Mm-hmm. Um, I find the same thing. And you know what I've been doing is I've just been wiping them down with a soapy like paper towel. And it's because of hand care. Right? So we put this like tough woolens or we put lotion on our hands and it probably builds up on our metal needles. Yeah. So it's good to wipe them down every now and again and clear that off. And honest to gosh, you will notice the difference immediately. I actually want to do it's that with so my, much smoother. Um, my socks. Yeah. Try it and you'll see an immediate difference. Really? I did that when I was knitting. What do you just wipe them down with? Just just warm, just water? I do um, soap and warm water on a paper towel and then I dry it off with typically like one of our microfiber cloths okay. just so that... It doesn't it change the, the color because I feel like my Addies, maybe I've done that yeah. before and they became discolored because they're nickel plated. Oh. Um, so, yeah. Anyways, we bought some tough woolens. We've. We love. We do. And I yeah. like them in my. I have a. What? I have my man bag, which is called a nut sack. Yeah. Um, so, in my nut sack, I like carrying one of these. So, and just like having them around the house. So, I mm-hmm. bought. Campfire s'mores and gingerbread, mm. which the gingerbread to me is very light. Ray says it's much no, it's, stronger, it's stronger than um, I smell right now, but I can smell it, but it's just not overpowering to me. And the campfire one has this really nice smoky undertone, I feel like. Yes. Um, but it, this one's really beautifully light. Um, and then I have my other one that I have is vanilla almond, which is one of my favorites. Mm-hmm. So mine, I can't find, unless I use, I might have used it all or something. My original one. Cause we only, I bet you it's somewhere up here. It might be. I don't know. But so I, I, this is perfect because I needed some more as well. So I got orange spice cake, which is. I don't know that I've smelled that. Oh, it's divine. It is. Yeah. Thank you. Oh yeah. It actually, Yeah. It smells like zest, orange zest. No, and you know spice like cinnamon and orange zest. The reason, so I smell carrot cake with orange. No, like it's a carrot cake, and that's why it's orange spice cake. Because yeah, carrot cake but is it that smel- spice. Yeah. Yes, to me, um, it smells like orange zest and cinnamon spice. Does your dad together. like carrot cake? Why is this coming yeah, to mind? Like right? I wonder if your mom got a carrot cake first. I don't know what she got. And then this one, I got espresso vanilla. Because it's the same smell as um, the oh, chapstick. That's the Isn't that wonderful? Oh my god! I want a candle. You of can't this have smell. it. Oh, I know. I want. Oh she my make, god! She should this, make candles. This, I need to. We need a candle that smells like. So this. my chapstick smells like that. So give me smooches more often. <laughs> I'm just kidding. So I got the Tufts um, chapstick when we went to Rhinebeck. Yeah. In the same um, flavor. Oh, I can't say enough about it. It smells so good. So espresso vanilla. Um, is that is that? I have um. I have two other. Okay, go ahead. No. Um. Okay. So instead of buying yarn, I've been buying books. There you go. So first, I bought, oh, and I don't know where the heck I saw this. Beautiful. It's probably from Instagram, but I was really happy. This I don't even know when this came out. It's not new. Oh, it's as, from my my home country. Because it's he's got a shillelagh. <laughs> Maybe I should just get a shillelagh. I'm leaving right now. So this is a book of sweater patterns. Mm-hmm. No, not just sweater patterns. That's a lie. So this is a book from Rowan. Dalesman by Martin Story. It has, if I'm not mistaken, 16 patterns. 4, 8, 12, 
14 patterns. Some of these are just unreal. So here are all the patterns in the book. So amazing sweaters. I want to knit this one, this one, this one, that one, that one, and maybe that one. That's never going to happen. This is more of a lookbook now. <laughs> oh, I would knit that cardigan in a heartbeat. So this one I would I'd like to knit. That color work one? Like this color work one. Not too much color work. Yeah. And it has that folded um, neck. Where's and the shillelagh? Where's the shillelagh? Right there. The walking stick? Yeah, isn't, that, isn't a shillelagh a cane? I don't know. Right? You can ask your friend... No, I don't want to. Um, How and do you then, spell shillelagh? Like, this is a beautiful sweater. And then um, here's another one. I think that this just has some It's a really club. It's a wooden walking stick. Interesting cables on here. Um, what was the other one? There you go. There's your shillelaghs. And here's the cardigan really like that's just a really nice that is nice band there button band and that'd be a lot to knit i like uh, the sweater vest is nice too this I, I just think of like a, a literally bathrobe. a bathrobe or um a cigar and well, i feel you, like wearing that you don't smoke cigars right wearing that with a cigar in a library <laughs> sitting in a leather chair with a cup of whiskey glass a glass of whiskey yeah um, and this cardigan reminds me very much actually of the spice cardigan by Andrea Mowry, mm. except it doesn't use, um, spin cycle. And a nice little color work sweater. I mean, there. you're going to show so, every page because they're so, all so beautiful. No. So yeah, I thought that this was a great little book. And then what's nice about this one too, is all of the patterns in here use row and yarn. And it just gives you all the information about the yarns. Yeah, and the colorways patterns. and all that fun stuff. So if you're like, if you don't like knitting with a scratchy wool, like they have the alpaca cotton and they have patterns in here knit in the alpaca cotton. So it may work for you um, a little bit better. It shows all the colors at the time that the book was printed. Right. So who knows what they have now. So that was my first book purchase. And then my second one was um, this book, Sock Architecture. We, our group showed it two weeks ago when we were talking about socks. Um, and surprisingly, we didn't have this. And I wanted to see if, like, heel options. I really thought we did. Especially when, if we do, I'm going to be really mad because I did look. Um, options of doing an afterthought heel or something that doesn't break up the stripe when you're knitting self-striping socks. Because I don't mind the afterthought heel. I do prefer a heel flap and gusset. Yeah, I like the afterthought But somebody heel. did say that there is like an afterthought heel flap and gusset in here. Really? Yeah. So I just thought it would be a good idea to to try some other things and have another reference book in the library up yeah. here. So that's why I picked that up. And that was it for my purchases? I believe so. I told you. Was it backwards? No. Nope. So. So maybe we'll do a giveaway. We'll do a giveaway <laughs> for this book. Here, put it in the library. That, you want I, to put it next to the other one? Yes, please. So I don't order a third one. I bet. So interesting. I bet people have been screaming at us because it's literally it's was behind you. No, but you can't see it oh, behind me. All right. Me. I apparently can't see it in front of me. But so I was like, this looks very familiar. I feel like we've got this. I feel like I got it. Oh, I know, buddy. We're, we're almost done. We're almost done. done. Come here. Tarquin's getting his hair cut tomorrow. Yes. And he's it's 1230 and he, he 37 needs his lunch. and he already has lunch by now. Yeah. So he's ready. Now, my next purchase for us is the... Well, really for you. Well, I mean, I, I you mean, can you use say them. I could, but they're really for you. I got the um, Chowgu Twisty Shorties. These are the... Um, the interchangeable little guys. So we have the blue ones. And at least you have all those extra cores now, too, since I bought a bunch by accident. Uh-oh. What? Where did all the needles must have fallen out? Look how little. What was that noise? 
him jumping. So this goes from a US zero all the way up to a US three. And it's got um, in three inches and two inch sizes. So yeah. So now our collection is complete. Your collection. Wouldn't you think I'm the girl? The girl who has, has everything. everything. Okay. And I think that uh, <coughs> that's all. That's all, folks. All right. So let's talk about what we've been reading and watching. Okay. Um, I'll start with reading. I have finished two books. I am continuing on with my reading of The Iron Druid Chronicles by Kevin Hearn. So I have finished books five and six. Book five is called Trapped, and book six is Hunted. Book six was really good. Actually, that's one of my favorite ones so far, I think. Um, and I'm actually, I just started book seven last night, which is called Shattered. Oh, yeah. Um, so this series follows Atticus, who is a over 2,000 year old. 2000 year old druid wow um he's the last druid until he is no longer the last druid and he um the events of the first two books lead to the start of ragnarok and we are now like the first two books set kind of set up the next seven books with ragnarok and and um, all that stuff. And I've talked about it before. There's just so many pantheons in here. Um, Greek, Roman, Native American. What's Norse. the difference between a pantheon and a Parthenon? The Parthenon is a building. Parthenon is a... Well, there is a pantheon and a Parthenon. There's two separate... Um, Belief systems like? No, those are buildings. The Parthenon oh. is a building. Yeah. Pantheons are the gods. Blah, blah, okay. But there is a building, I believe, called the Pantheon as well. Um and I remember, I forget, but I remember because that was in my art history class where we oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. talked about both of those. Oops. Keep kicking um, the camera. But yeah, so like you have your Irish, every anything you can think of, I think with, I don't Did know. Did I tell you I was Irish? Yeah. Oh. Um, without, I don't know that we've seen any um, Aztec in this series yet. Um, most of them are Norse, Roman, Greek, Native American, I think is kind of, um, actually, no, we've had some from different planes and I forgot fin, hmm. Finland, we have Japanese. Yeah. So God's from all over the place. Um, it's just, if you like modern or I would say urban fantasy, Yeah, it's a really good series. It's very well written. He has a dog Oberon who's like 50 years old now. Um, who talks like they Imagine not if physi- could talk, not physically talk like my, they like sure. mind link and talk that way. Mm-hmm. And his commentary is hysterical. Um, he cracks me up all the time. I've only read the first one. I had only read, I think, up to the third book previously and yeah. then stopped. But this year, we're I said the other night, my word of the year is to finish. So I'm finishing any series that I started, finishing my project. Like I just want to make sure I'm not just stopping midway through something. So I'm going to finish this series. Then I'm going to finish. I have two other series that I'm going to finish. The Mark Frost and then um, Aragon series. Oh, yeah. So those are like my You only have one more book left of the Aragon series. No, two. Because there was the fourth one written after the series was over. Oh. So that's what I've been reading. Cool. I just need to put this away because it's really driving me bananas. I finished. Did I not finish it? I finished uh, Book of Life by Deborah Geary. Nope, Harkness. Nope, Deborah Harkness. I think you do that every time. Every single time, and uh, it was lovely. It's just such a lovely yep. series. And so I am reading now. That ends that s- trilogy. Trilogy, but the series continues um, with. Technically, it's book four. But it's called um, Times Convert, and it is basically about Marcus, which is if for those of you who are uh, who've read the series, Matthew's um, son, and it talks about him growing up through the like colonial revolution times, yeah. colonial times on the um, 
yeah, and it's it's good. It's actually really good. I forgot how good it was. For me, it was just a little bit difficult because I think I think the author writes uh, Matthew and Diana a little bit differently, like their interactions with each other, their personalities. Um, it's so weird. It's hard to explain. If you've read the books, let me know down below if you think that it's a little bit different. I think that their personalities are written a little bit differently in this book. Do you think because they're not the focus? Maybe. So maybe they're because they're. But not she the does focus. still speak like in the in what in the chapters that feature Diana. She does still still speak in the first person. And but do you think to the events of the three books, especially now, right? I forget the time between books. It's about a year. And two? with how much now they've changed just within that one year, yeah. too. Could be that their their inner dialogues or dialogues with each other have just changed so much because their life is no longer as hectic. Yeah. Um, personally, as it was yeah. in those three books, or maybe you know, I think that I think that there's there's a story to be told maybe there too because Sarah and Agatha have like this relationship that's like unspoken relationship mm. that you kind of want to be like, when did this happen? So I'm, maybe I'm feeling like I'm playing, I'm trying to play catch up or I'm waiting to play catch up. And then that catch up never happens. Yeah. I can see that. So who knows, but it's, it is really good from, um, from Marcus's perspective. And I think that the author does a fan, she's a historian. So she does a right. really, really great job making you feel like you're right then, like mm -hmm. right there. And she's very historically accurate, I think. And I thought that that book, um, expands so much on the first book because you get a little bit of Marcus's history in the first book and it does so well tying back to that and yeah. expanding on the little bit that you got there. So right. it's a really good um, refresher of that. Mm -hmm. But then um, a better world building. More yeah. world building than that yeah. little tidbit that you got. True. True, true, true. Um, um, what else? What have you been watching? Watching. So we forgot to mention this last time, and we got. I think we had a couple questions. Oh yeah. So we watched the on HBO Max on New Year's Day. We watched the twentieth anniversary Harry Potter special, and guys, that is so um, like I was. It was emotional. I was emotionally compromised yeah. after that. <laughs> after Same. viewing that, um, I thought it was really cool to hear from the cast. And especially the main three, the cast and how different the they were treated by the directors as they aged. And each different director, too. Each di and right. their experience working with children. Right. Um, yeah, it was really interesting. And then you, like, you know, luckily they seem to have all turned out okay well -ish. daniel radcliffe i know had issues even yeah. on set he would he often i believe he's mentioned it he often would go to a set drunk yeah um so towards the end he he definitely was yeah compromised i um but it's just interesting it's just like an interesting you know the the kids they started when they were 10 and 11 and um yeah 11 and i don't know it's just, it was just it was a really interesting even if you're not a harry potter fan just for that that and, kind of look into into that was really interesting yeah i'm learning that like emma um, Watson. Watson had thought about stepping away. Like yeah. she didn't want to film anymore. Yeah. Um, yeah, it was cool. There were just so many little great tidbits, and mm -hmm. um, there were just moments there where I almost lost my <laughs> shiznit watching yeah. that. Like Ray looked over at me, cause, so he does this now because I do have emotional reactions to things, and asked me if I'm okay, and I was like, absolutely not. Like no. Well, because I'm glad that I'm not the only emotional one now. Yeah. You know? Um I think in your old age you've gotten a lot um a lot more sensitive. No, it's not that serious. You just serious. rolled your eyes hardcore. I probably did. Um so, so yeah, also, we watched that. We've been watching Foundation. We're we're again finish, right? So the word of the year, finish. Uh we have one episode left on Foundation and then we're going to that is finished and then we're moving back to Lucifer and we're going to finish that before we watch anything yeah. else. So we have not been watching A Discovery of Witches. We have not. Do um, not spoil it for we, me. So that's just kind of where we're at. And yeah. um, like I said, we've been, you know, our podcast, there are two new ones. I'll write them down next time. I'll oh, forget yeah. the names. Two new ones. Yeah. Um, yeah. I'm not even going to say their names. No, because you're going to yeah. get it wrong. Right. Yeah. Um, so been watching podcasts and what else? Any movies? I watched. Let's see. I watched Catwoman with Haley Berry. 
Um, Have you never because, seen that before? So Isn't I that from never, like the 90s? It's old. And I remember it coming old. out and get... Well, older. So I remember co- it coming out and getting... Bad God reviews. Awful I reviews. remember that too. And now it's one of those movies that now has a cult following and people yeah. are starting to appreciate it. So I decided to give it a watch. Um, it has her, Heron Stone... Heron. Halle Berry. Sharon Stone and Benjamin Bratt in it. Yeah. And... Um, I think it's kind of cool. It wasn't awful. No, and it, it's a very interesting origin story. It is because I... So she's not Selena Kyle. No. No. I forget, I forget who she is. I, but she goes to that lady, the old lady's yeah, house, yeah. who has like all who the is, cats. I've only seen it, I think, once or twice, and it was a long time ago. Yeah, so it wasn't awful. It wasn't yeah. great, but it wasn't... Yeah. I would watch it again. Um, we haven't. All, we also have not watched Matrix. No, we did not watch the new Reunions? Matrix. Matrix um, Reunion, something like that? Oh, you that? know what I watched while I knit... Um, my hat. What? I was watching uh, this hat that I'm wearing. I'm looking for it. <laughs> uh, Mission Impossible. I watched the first one. Oh, you did? Yeah. Mm-hmm. I want to go through and re-watch the whole series because I've only... I think I... Well, now you're starting, not finishing. I started a series and now I need to finish that oh, series. I, you know we also, if you really want to take that to... Um, Don't tell me Lord of the Rings. To the bank. We should probably finish that now that we I did watch it, the first We did one. watch the first one again. No, but um, what was that really good good show? And then it ended awful. The no wolf. No, what is it? What's it called? Uh uh-uh. uh. What is it called? I know. No, I'm with the big no worm at the end. No, there's nothing else to that. I'm never going to watch that again. That was awful. Raised by wolves. Raised on by HBO. wolves. It started off great, fantastic, fantastic, and then and then the giant flying worm at the, Done. <laughs> the end was like, Done. what the. What? Um, what else have we watched? There's something else that I watched, or we watched. I don't know if it was me or us. We have a lot of basketball has been on. UConn yeah, has been I, I watch a lot of basketball. Um, I like college basketball, so yeah. this is my time of year. Australian Open's on, so I watched a little bit last night. Is that where I heard the t- the tennis? Yeah, I watched a little bit last I night. I was dreaming. Um, Mission Impossible. Oh, I am, since I'm working from home and I need some background stuff and I watch it, I... Decided to finish my rewatch of Teen Wolf, so I am now oh. on season five, part two. Good. Um, and I just I think that's such a good show. Yeah. It, I for it to be a like a teen show, mm-hmm. um, and supernatural. It's one of the better supernaturally type of shows out there. I I enjoy that. I love. I think I've said it before. I love Lydia and her progression. I love that. Lydia too. Her progression through that is fantastic, and I'm re- I'm doing it because they're coming out with a movie. Yeah, within the next like year or two, so I wanted to rewatch that. I'm pretty sure that's it, right? I think that's it on my end as well. Yeah. Um, at school yeah. started back up again. Oh yeah, that's right. To say that. So this is my last nursing course, and then I have to do two or three. I think it's just two, like electives. Electives. So, I'm just so done. <laughs> I'm just well, tired. I mean, you're almost like done, done. Yeah. So that's yeah, good. Yeah, but then I'll then I've got to. Well, you start don't have to. Again. You don't have to if you don't want to. No, I need to. But you don't to. have to rush right into it. You could take a year off, mm. or you could take six months off. That's dangerous because that's what I did when I graduated nursing school. I, I was like, oh, I'm just going to take the year off and then I'll go back for my bachelor's. But if you finish, so if you have two other classes, you should be finished by April. I should. I'm hoping to be finished by June. I don't know why June is sticking out in my head. I think I may have three classes. Or maybe I was thinking that they were 15-week courses, but I think they're only seven-week courses. Yeah, I thought there were seven-week courses, so you would be done like... We'll even take the summer off. Just we'll see what the... happens. Yeah. We'll um, see. All right. So, y'all, that is it. Um, just a reminder, shop update, the 28th, oh, 6 yeah. p.m. Eastern time. Um, and, yeah, so then we will see you guys in a fortnight. Yeah. So we hope you have enjoy your. Thank you um, for stopping by. Thank you for yeah. hanging out. If you've watched it this long, um, and, um, and uh, we're gonna go eat some Elio's pizza. Yeah, we're gonna go. Today's a cheat day, so we're gonna go have some pizza before we head over to your parents' I'm house. So later. hungry. I know. Yeah. All right. Well. All right. Bye, guys. Have a good bye, two everyone. weeks.